Hello and welcome. And today we've got a little game. Here it's a tournament game between NF Baton and Union Art and Pro, which uh, Baton seems to be a bit inactive. Now he's doing something. Hmm. But this is a one vs one in Russia, in the Russian nation, with zero peace time. It's a village star. I think the resources are normal. Yeah, it's uh, thousands. I think for a village start. And since this is the Russian nation, we are going. Oh, apparently the 18th century is instantly enabled. This is going to make an inter interesting change. So for Russia, I think it stays almost the same. The people will use spearmen because these dreaded musketeers from the Russian barracks are useless. They have very low range, they are going to retreat very very fast if melee, if melee engagements are on the, on the rise. In cavalry it looks like we are going to have some Hussar scouts and the Dragoon and the Dragoon, Dragoon Horde. I don't know if this is actually a scout unit because I don't know if this is actually uh, with balloon enabled or not. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how that works. And excuse me for a second, I have to check if the recording is running, and it is. So we are all in for this one. So they are very likely going for a massive melee uh, army. I don't know if they are actually going to use the 18th century barracks in this game, because it, it is quite long to build, yes. It's better to, to build another Australian barracks. I think Russia can build five quite cheaply. Let's see, Button has three. Mm, Atom Pro... Atom Pro has one, two, three, four. Yes, Russia can build five Australian barracks with relative ease. We can see the resources are way more spent on Atom Pro's side. Understandable because Bacon somehow Baton started about 30 seconds late for reasons unknown. He still has decent chances though. It's not like he's instantly beaten by that now. Hmm, he starts he's saving up money. Maybe he's going for the Never mind, he just spent money on something. Gold mine upgrades. It might be the case that Bacon is going, Bacon is going for a for a long term, longer term game. He has his uh, food upgrades. He's going for mine upgrades, which uh, I think it's normal though. Atom Pro doesn't have mine upgrades apparently. He also doesn't have his food upgrades yet, so I think Atom Pro is rather going for a rush, rush strategy, whilst ba Baton is trying to go for a defensive strategy, saving his time, making a bigger army and a better army, so he can uh, deliver a strong punch, maybe building some 18th century barracks. Baton is using the Dragoons from the stable. It looks like Atom Pro is using the Vichyas. I'm sorry if I'm botching that, but I don't really know how to pronounce that. I just think it's pronounced Vichyas, and so I call it Vichyas. And Atom Pro is already arriving with some Hussars, or rather Siege Cossacks and a Hussar. He's trying to make a backstab attempt, whilst Baton's army is uh, conveniently outside. And Baton is not prepared at this for all. He hasn't seen this because his wall, his wall wasn't finished. Uh, we can only hope for him that he captures off. Baton does not have ammunition. He doesn't have coal. His dragoons are useless at this point. I don't know if the capture is on or off. I can't really tell either. We'll see now though. The capture appears to be off. 
At least, I think it is. There is no guards on either side, so I do suppose that the, that the capture is off. So I don't really see the reason of the siege cost are great apart from diverting forces, which Artem Pro is actually reaching the opposite of this. He is managing to reunite Baton's forces into one blob so he can provide a better defense against Artem Pro's main army, which is incoming here. And here. This is though this is only a bunch of infantrymen. The infant if the infantrymen keep going in first. With the pikes so far behind, they are going to be easy, easy match for the. Uh, they are going to see an easy match in the spearmen. The spearmen are just going to wreck them apart. Though the upgrade situation might be a little bit different. Whoops, actually it's not that different. Layton's pikes are almost as good as Atom Pro's pikes. But Atom Pro has the benefit of the surprise in this case. I don't think that Baton expects the Spanish Inquisition. But now he might. There's Susas coming around here and he is, is going to see them I'm pretty certain. Because Susas don't just vanish. He's putting this, I think, 120 formation to guard this po this point, whilst the rest of his army appears to go for the left for the left side. He has the clear dragoon advantage here, so he's going to potentially make easy match, make easy uh, food out of them. And yes, the capture is off, but Baton still still insists on sending out his peasants for some odd reason. Would at least have exploded the gold mine to deal some damage to the witchers and the infantrymen, of course. Okay, this uh, this uh, ambush army is being scared away by the dragoons. They have no chance against them, especially not with their numerical uh, inferiority in ranged units. Though there are some siege cossacks, they might actually pose a threat a threat for them. Let's see. Atom Pro's pikes are apparently 6 and 5 now. Baton's pikes are 6 and 6, so if Baton engages in a melee fight now, he has very good chances on winning. Of course, only if there's not some kind of extreme bonus playing into Atom Pro's hands. But Baton appears to be a little bit distracted or blinded. He's going in. <laughs> that was a massacre. And I think even the infantrymen went into this battle. Yes, you can see some bodies there. Slowly moving away. I didn't expect this to happen this decisively, but it did. Baton lost about half his pikes there, whilst Artem Pro lost an entire army. I think that was about 100 infantrymen and potentially 150 pikes I am not sure I wish I would have checked that but we can still check mm, let's see statistics if you want to see them now you will have to pause Baton lost if you take this and yeah that was about 120 pikes oh and uh, Oh, 90 infantrymen, that was quite close there. 91 to be exact. Baton is going for a counter attack. Though Artem Pro is prepared for this, he has some siege cossacks nearby that can strike at any at any moment. And the, and the pikes of Baton must be ready for a kind of melee engagement. And Baton must be careful here, because these siege cossacks are going to turn his dragoons into minced meat. But apparently Baton doesn't quite pay attention here. But it's fair enough, he has to move two armies at once, which can at times be difficult. But uh, this is a bit disgraceful. 
I think he's just trying to meet this unit up with this one, so he can pack a bigger punch against his army, defeat it decisively as the last one, and uh, move on to Artem Pro's base, which Artem Pro is actually attempting a second two-side maneuver. Some of Baton's dragoons have survived, or these have arrived from the uh, from this uh, army. This, this is not the best idea for Baton to actually uh, move his entire army around like this in his dream, because he can easily be sniped away from these guys. Do they have any upgrades? No, they don't. They are in fact mercenary dragoons. So they already have the benefit of a higher fire rate. Normal Dragoons may have one more firepower, but they have way less fire rate, which is a bit of a problem. Though they are still going to beat, uh, to potentially beat, I mean, the Mercenary Dragoons, simply because they have more health, twice the much, twice health, and a bit more. Let's see. They are going for mercenary dragoon strats, which is interesting. I mean, uh, for this type of game, of course, mercenary dragoons are very powerful. They can deliver a lot of power, a lot of su support power in a very short time, which can be helpful, especially against low armor units or even armored units like the spearmen. Let's see, they have 14 protection against bullets. The information that's six, so mercenary dragoons would still deal 12 damage. Baton is making a cuirass, so they would take only 10. And with the second one, they would still take 8, which would make 11 shots for them to die. But there's a critical hit chance. That doesn't apply often, but it still can happen. That's a bit overkill for infantry, of course, but uh, with a healthy amount, let's say 100, 100 mercenary dragoons, you are still going to be able to defeat most melee, melee formations. And now Baton is turning it, turning this this spear around and making a two front maneuver on Artem Pro who is prepared for this. But uh, Baton is of course not stupid. Though I think he could potentially defeat this flank with his army that's here. That's a healthy amount of pikes, that's... I don't like math, let's just say that's 190 pikes, 14, 40 round shears and 70 archers, that could be easy. Because this army is only consisting of... Mm, 120 pikes or something like that. 150 infantrymen, that's, that might be a problem. Of a Baton's pike supremacy number. It might not be that much of a difference, to be honest. Some of these spikes are not formated though. Oh no, Baton is turning around. I hope he isn't engaging just like this because that's a terrible angle. Oh, but here is the Dragoon. On the other side there is the Dragoon Horde. Doing God's work on the Spearman of Atom Pro. Who also has quite a number of Dragoons, but still less than Baton. But Baton is a bit reckless with them. So is Artem Pro to be honest, and Artem Pro is losing heavily, whilst Baton is running out of ammunition, but that's no problem, he just rebought it, so that's fine. On this side, Baton is crushing the army of Artem Pro. As I was expecting pretty much, since at this point infantrymen are really not a good option anymore. Considering the amount of high power, high power units, like spearmen in this case, or even the dragoons, Mercenary round shears would be the way to go for me, because they can tank more damage, they can stay longer on the front lines and make the pipemen fight more efficiently, because they can output more damage bef before they get hit themselves. Infantrymen are good in the early game because they can deliver a lot of damage to unarmored units. And it looks like Baton actually... It looks like Baton agrees to this, by using uh, round shears. Artem Pro on the other hand... It's using ranches as well, I didn't expect that. But I think that at this point, Artem Pro is in a very weakened spot. 
because Baton still has a healthy number of pikes coming around. And he's also in his base with a lot of Ragoons, which are actually winning. They are winning this battle. I think. There's still plenty of ammunition. Of course they have armor. They have a... Uh, wow. They have they have the maximum resistance against bullets, which means they take 8 damage, as we might remember. No, they don't. Armor is a very nice thing in this game. But you might remember, as I said, the Dragoons have a high damage output. And such they... Uh, they can easily defeat Pikemen, even in this state, simply because of their, of their high fire rate. Which makes them viable in almost any situation. Except if your enemy uses um, a Musketeer army. A full-on Musketeer army with fodder and stuff, then Dragoons start to be a mercenary at least. Start to be a, a little bit bad for their cost. Simply because they can't take the damage and easily die to other Musketeers and such. So... Aiton has managed to crush the left flank and secure the right one under heavy losses. Atom Pro is now preparing for his last stand. And that's it. Aiton has won this game and he is going to move on to the next game. Congratulations, maybe I'm going to be able to record the next one as well. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the battle, it was very interesting for me to see. And uh, see you in the next video. Bye bye.